Okay, week eight inverters. And there's a couple, uh, there's one little quiz here. So before, um, before doing that, go ahead and get through these assignments. So let's just hit the high points. Array voltage and string sizing. String sizing, you know, the, the whole point here is that uh, in general, you want to keep your wiring as short and fat as possible. So that, that's the whole uh, point. You wouldn't want to have your, uh, your panels far away from your inverters because you're, you're going to lose electricity due to joule losses as that uh, moves through there. Um, that's especially true in, in DC lines. It does. It, me it mentions NEC right here, National Electric Code. And this code comes out every three years, so there will be an NEC 2017 coming out, yep. typically which you'll see in months. So there's also a 2014, which you'll usually see is, um, it, it usually takes Montana a year or two to adopt it, so we're still operating under the, uh, the 2014 code. So here's a relatively large array, and you can see that if, if this guy is much further from the inverter, you're going to lose a lot more uh, energy moving through that system. Now, could you put multiple inverters to? Invest in yeah, that? in a lot of ways, that's that's why we've moved towards the uh, the micro inverter. Is you, you're you're sending that AC over the over the longer stretch rather than DC. That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, this is right, right here, this is, this is your um, IV curve, and what we're always, what we're always aiming for is the, the knee of the curve. And so obviously if I'm, if I'm sitting down here, uh, a, smaller rec, a smaller rectangle is suboptimal. If I sit over here, suboptimal, so somewhere in that knee, and you can see that in general, uh, for all of these different radiation intensities all the way up to a uh, thousand watts per square meter your optimal voltage is sitting right here at, at about 30 you know plus or minus but that's the whole point of uh, trying to sit on that IV curve in the proper spot also every every inverter is going to have its maximum capacity Voltage. This is important right here. So the NEC uses temperature to determine the maximum system voltage. The criteria for determining the maximum, there you go, that's 690. Mm -hmm. which seriously freaks people out that we have such extremes. Mm -hmm. But we have to figure it for what is our coldest temperature here mm -hmm. because it varies that number of your conductor size tremendously yep. uh, because of what that voltage will be. Yep. And we're limited to 600 volts by NEC. Oh, that's right, 600 volts for um, for any system before you, have, before you have to get into um, an electrician's license, high voltage, yeah. You pronounce it ASHRAE or ASHRAE. People pronounce it both both ways. We and we've got both of those uh, those books here. They're in the library and, and uh, they're they're handy. Just 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 your go to.
Yeah, so right, right here, this is just what Tim was mentioning. Um, steeply tilted PV array, so something that's, you know, um, you know, past 45, you know, closer to vertical in high altitude location, you know, where we are, so very low air mass, um, subjected to snow reflectance. So now all, all of a sudden you, you've got um, your, your arrays pointing right at the sun, it's very cold, so the voltage is going to go up, and something you typically wouldn't think about, you're getting almost double the juice uh, with that snow reflection. Right, yeah, here comes a lot more, uh, a lot more sunshine you know, over one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can get a lot lot more lot more bang for your buck. People usually don't think about that that snow as a as a reflector bringing in even more uh, more sunlight. So the ash ray low design temperature is zero C, and that, I mean, that's just freezing. That's not actually there, very cold. Um, and the 2% design temperature is 25. That's taking you up to 300 volts DC. There's a reference to how to actually go in and, and, and find the, uh, the voltage as a function of temperature, because that's really, really what you're after. So right here, and here's you know case in point. The colder you uh, the colder you get, you can actually go beyond that uh, standard test conditions. You know a lot more bang for your buck, a lot more power at those uh, at those cold cold temps. Array degradation. This is something uh, to consider. And in fact, when you go in and do your Techno-economic calculations, your, your array is going to start into some power, but over time you're going to lose it, so the amount of energy you're going to get per year can drop by as much as um, half a percent. And that's a half percent multiplier, so it's, it's going to lose a half a percent of whatever value, whatever value it is. It's not, you don't just keep subtracting it. It's a half percent so of what the previous year. Next year, that much power to make it was a half percent of that month. Yeah, exactly. So, and if, 20 years from now, if you're looking at your array going, man, I'm going to use my warranty because I'm going to get 80% of the power out of when it was brand new. Mm -hmm. Well, that's to be expected. And, and as far as the company is concerned, that is still within their warranty. Yeah. So, the example calculation you said you started at um, 0.5. If we said half a percent, that'd be 0.005. So this year equals um, that times that. So that's your um, that's your loss. Actually, let's throw this over here. And this guy equals um, 100 minus that guy. And then we can just continue on down. So this will so this uh, this guy um, equals that number times this, and then um, this number equals that number minus that. And so if we just do it that way, um, so this is good, this is good. Let's just see how we calculate this. So if we, if we pin that at F uh, dollar sign 5, take this guy and scroll it down. Now we can take this whole thing and do this. So there's your one, two, three. Take these guys. The other thing, the interesting thing to note about that and keep in mind is if anything, our technological demand is going to go up over the years. And if I design a system today saying mm. I need a four kilowatt or to run my house today mm -hmm. in 20 years 
what's my array value output going to be? It's going to be like 3.2. Mm -hmm. And I surely have not gone down in my technological demand if anything has gone up. Right. So my system that today runs everything no problem in 20 years, just through degradation, is going to be a problem. Not would you add to your array or would you replace it? Question. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, and again, what, what you do, you just run the same same numbers again and say, what's um, what's it cost for new? It, can, I, can I still squeeze something out of the old? And I don't well, know. Here's my I don't know. 214 is a good example of that, is what's the residual value of it? Mm -hmm. I sold my panels in right. 10 years. Yeah, we do that at the present. Where I basically lost in you know, 10 years, I lost 5% of my output, but they still have a certain you know retained value. You just have to run the numbers and see is it worth selling all these panels and buying new ones or or would it be more sufficient to the huge advantage I would think is that in 20 years of technology. You can probably replace the same footprint and now have a six kilowatt array instead of a four kilowatt array. Right. Using your same racking and everything. To Just be replacing for the it. actual panel. Right. Maybe. Why do you think you're being all here? Guy. F two, this is going to be F five. Yeah. So this is just showing you, you know, if you start with a hundred, let's just I just use a hundred as an arbitrary deal, start with a hundred watts. After 15 years, if you're losing uh, five percent, which that or half a percent, so let me, let me change that to percentage. 0.5 percent is exactly what that is. You can see over uh, so it out of 15 years, um, you're at 93 percent. Other otherwise, you would, you would do something like this equals. Uh, 100 minus 15 times 0.5. Or no, my, I guess it'd be minus. I guess the nice part is that you're well past your return on investment at that point. Yeah. It's like they balance out about eight. Yeah, so it's not that much different. It, it would, you would, if you just if you subtracted a half a percent each year from a hundred, you'd be at ninety two percent. But if you're multiplying by a half a percent, you're at ninety three. A little, little bit of hair splitting, but uh, you know, that's how the utilities run it. That's how they make their money. They're also saying just no conclusive. That's why I just I just ran this as power. You know, just you're kind of looking at power losses, and that that's really highlighted here. No conclusive data just regarding how much of this loss is current versus voltage. You know, what what, what are you losing? Well, some of both, a little bit of each. Uh, you just say it's some of each. You know, and, and as these technologies improve, that that number could change too. I was just over, gosh, I was at, at NASA, um, NASA outfit in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and they had panels. You know, they've been running 30 years plus. You know, really since the Apollo missions, just still still sitting out there cranking away. I want to see some of those translucent panels that come out with. Oh yeah. The indium tin oxide guys? Yeah. yeah. Where's that 
did he go wrong? Supply itself again. Yeah, you look somewhere like Chicago or That would definitely be an investment on the Even though you never put those on your house because they are so inefficient, but if you put them on a huge building like that, it would. A huge skyscraper. I mean, you know, I don't know skyscrapers in California. Most of them are pretty much nothing but glass when they're right. up. So, yeah. And actually, I've seen now where they've got silver PV paint that you paint your house with. It. Yeah. Now that's getting smart. <laughs> So here's one little um, here's just one little exercise. And so let's let's look and see how temperature is affected or how voltage is affected by temperature. So this would be your uh, max voltage you, you would see. This is the open circuit voltage. That open circuit voltage is going to be for standard conditions. Uh, standard conditions are going to be again at 25 degrees C. That's your that's your T ref. Your t your low temp. We plug that in at minus 13 degrees. So when you uh, subtract 25 C from 13 C, you get negative 38 C. This is your temperature coefficient, and it basically says we're looking at uh, uh, 0.137 volts per degree Celsius. So that 0.137 is multiplied. So you get the. So the reason this guy is negative is you're, you're going to multiply a negative by a negative and give it a positive. So it's going to give you five extra volts. So if you're sitting down at negative 13C, you get five extra volts. Times 12 panels in a mm. single string. Yeah, you know, if these guys are wired in, in series, now you're looking at 60 extra volts for uh, 12 panels. So, relatively simple. So, on a nice sunny day in the summertime, and you're hooking up 12, and you're at 500, 500 volts, you're like, yeah, I can stick one more. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't right. hurt anything. Yeah. Because I have 100 to play with. No, no, you don't have 100 to play with. You've got maybe 40, mm -hmm. and one more panel would put it over the top. Yeah, and that's that's what this guy tells you right here. This is the the max number because 600 remember is your maximum DC you're allowed to hit. That's the max per panel. So 14 panels is all you can do on this guy. And you also use the same exact calculation when you're figuring out conductor size. Yeah, let's do some conductor stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's look at the string sizing. So remember, you, in your, when you're heading to your inverter, you're going to have a set of parallel and a set of series uh, panels. And so here's, the, here's an example. So this is, the, this is the inverter. These are the panels. And this is where we are. Okay, so we need to we need to find those bad boys. Uh, I guess we can just go look them up, huh? Let's just take a look online. Let's look them up. You should just be able to right click that. You should, yeah. Right click who? No, I mean, go ahead and open that up. But oh. When you highlight I'll show you on the next one. When it's highlighted like that, do a right click on that highlight. This? And you should be able to search through Google when you right click. You have to right click on that? Really? No. No, but that's not that one, huh? Oh, Google has found its way into the Word documents now? Yeah. Yeah, like in this PDF or whatever, if I highlight something, I can 
search for Google. Searching for Google. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Woo! Yeah. So maximum DC voltage input, uh, I'm seeing 500 right there, 500 volts. Minimum maximum power point tracking voltage input, let's see if we can't find that here. So it's 175, right? Your peak power tracking voltage starts at 175, 400. Yeah. 400 volts. So if we're running, well, yeah. so how do we decide if we pick the 208 or the 240? Right. What's what's our what's our decision for? Actually, so scroll up on that on the specs. Does that mean that be the right one? Because that's the voltage tracking for. Okay, there's your with PV start voltage. That's the number you're looking for. 228 volts. That's the input? Yes. Because that other number that you were looking at, Brad, is the grid. That's what it's tracking based on the grid. But um, the 228 volts down there is the PV startup voltage. Where it starts is MPPT. Okay. All right, so PV start voltage. Okay, so we'll use um, 228 for that. Okay, for the module, let's go look at that guy. Keep the sunny boy up, hit this. So here we are, REC solar, 240 watt solar panel. Open circuit voltage. Yeah, let's go see if we can find the specs. Uh, VOC, 36.8. coefficient voltage. And we've got okay negative point oh double nine negative zero point oh nine nine volts per Kelvin or volts per Celsius same deal. Okay got our data. Okay, the max VOC for a string of 13 at STC. So that's at uh, standard 25 degrees. 25 degrees. So let's let's use the full equation. Yeah, let's use that full equation. So let's go back. Um, I'll pull up this guy. So let's go right back. Here, so the Vmax. I don't know if I can copy and paste that or not. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that's ugly. <laughs> uh, okay, so Vmax. 
equals uh, VOC plus T, what we got, low minus T ref uh, times alpha VOC, right? Times alpha VOC. So I'll get these guys lowercase, that's a symbol. So let's do times. This, do this, and do that. I think we need parens somewhere around our, yeah, boom, boom, and uh, boom, 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 and boom. right. So from there, and you just you know get get the equation right, and from there we just we just plug and chuck. So can you do you have those numbers handy? View maybe, can we do a split screen? Yeah, let's do a split screen there. Now we can crank it right in. Okay, so equals. VOC equals, okay, so we're looking at 36.8 plus T low, and since we're at standard, we're just sitting right at 25C. Minus. Thirty-six point I love that the grumpy chef shows up every day. <laughs> so there's zero. Um, so in this case, we're, we're just looking at zero times whatever that is. Uh, and it gets really simple in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. Because your temperature difference is that. Right. And you can come back in. I, I would recommend, you know, you know, making sure it's nice in there. Right. Two o'clock. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys gonna rock it? Yeah. Alright, we'll get out of here. Um, I brought these. But no, not usually. What are you doing?